at millimeter wave, because of these narrow beams, the environment we're working in is very different. We may have a situation where we have a direct line of sight uh, from a base station to an object, or we may come off a, a reflector, or we may have dynamic reflectors in the case here where we've got a, a signal that's bouncing off a moving vehicle. So we have a quite complex situation now compared to what we had before at low frequencies. We have to, first of all, search for base stations. You've got to then acquire the signals. You've then got to track them. You've got to feed back. You've got to refine, and then you've got to switch when necessary. And this whole process is happening at rates that we have yet to discover because we haven't really studied this problem yet in 3GPP. And some of these transitions could be happening multiple times a second. And that's a big overhead in terms of, of signaling. What it looks like at the physical layer is the base station is going to, instead of just transmitting the uh, synchronization signals everywhere in a sector, 120 degrees, and the, and the mobile just sits there and, and listens and says, OK, that, that looks OK, whatever. Because of the directionality, it's now possible at FR2 in uh, NR for the base station to send out 64 different synchronization signals in different directions. And it does that in a burst of 5 milliseconds. And that burst can be repeated every 20 milliseconds as a default. Uh, that number can change, but that's the basics. So now our problem has gone from being a, a non-dimensional, non-spatial dimensional problem to being something that is, I've got 64 different dimensions on the transmit side. And the process would look something like this in terms of uh, the, the ladder diagrams. This is something that there will be more work done on in the standards. Uh, certainly, this is something that would be considered part of the radio resource management requirements.